All right, so today what we're doing, we're learning about the Opium War. So we're going to learn how the First Opium War begun here. Go ahead and make a bullet and write down First Opium War, 1839 to 1843. So First Opium War, 1839 to 1843. So what ends up happening is uh, China's been having issues with opium. Right, so opium keeps on coming to the country, and China keeps on having issues with it. They have banned it in 1729. But people keep on bringing opium in, particularly the British keep on op bringing opium in, and they're just straight up to selling it in China. And it's becoming a pretty big issue. Now, China had passed, you know, more laws on opium. So if you were a Chinese citizen and you were caught uh, moving opium in the country of China, uh, if you were caught with it, uh, it was a death penalty. So if you were traveling in China and you were carrying opium with you, uh, it was a death penalty for you if you were caught transporting opium in the country. To further try and control the opium trade, the Chinese government put a new person in charge of the opium trade. Uh, basically, think of this person like a police officer who has um, authority to try and deal with the opium trade. Go to make a number one. And for number one, we're going to write down March 1839. New commissioner to control opium trade, Lin Lexu. So number one, March 1839, new commissioner control opium trade, Lin Lexu. So Lin Lexu, he's trying to get the opium trade to come to an end. And what he does, one of his first steps is that he decides that, hey, we're going to put an embargo on Britain until they stop bringing opium into the country. An embargo is simply just means when you stop all trade with somebody. So Lin was like, hey, if you want any more tea, you need to stop bringing opium into China. So it was a complete stop on all trade, so a complete embargo. So they wouldn't trade with the British anymore. I'm going to make it two. Write down the word embargo. So two, embargo. And then we're going to write also. Uh, stop all trade with. So do is embargo, stop all trade with. So an embargo is when you stop all trade with a country. So you just stop all the trade with them. So that was Lynn's idea of how to bring the opium problem at least under control. Uh, was to stop all trade the British until they agreed to stop bringing opium into the country. So the British start trying to negotiating with the Chinese government, and the British do round up all the opium that they had, and they actually gave all that opium over to Lin Lexu. So we're going to make a three. We're going to write down opium amount to a year's worth of trade was given to Commissioner Lin. So a year's worth of opium. Now uh, we learned before that 900 tons of opium were being brought into China every year by the British. So this would be like, you know, 1.8 million pounds of opium. So opium amount to a year's worth of trade was given to Commissioner Lin. It's about 1.8 million pounds. So Commissioner Lin then has all this opium and he has to do something with it. I mean, he has it like kind of stored and so forth, but storing that much opium is kind of a problem. So he has all his opium and he needs to figure out kind of what to do with it. Now, trade did resume with the British. So after they gave him all his opium, trade with Britain then resumed and the British were buying tea and so forth. But Commissioner Lynn needed to figure out what to do with the opium. So to get rid of the opium, he decided that, well, instead of sticking it in like a warehouse and just letting it sit there, he decided just to get rid of it. And the way I got rid of it was by chucking it into the ocean. I got to make a four. And for four, we're going to write down, Lynn disposed of the opium, dissolving it in the ocean. So Lynn took all this opium, chucked into the ocean, and dissolved it. Now, to dissolve opium in water, um, or to dissolve opium, what you need is you need water, salt, you got both of those in the ocean. And the last thing you need is lime juice. So water, salt, and lime juice. And then you mix it all up. And there you go. That will dissolve the opium. So 
So he ends up, you know, dissolving all this opium and getting rid of it. And the problem is once he got rid of all the opium by dissolving the ocean, the problem with that then became is that the British decided that, you know what, we need an excuse to invade China. So they used this as an excuse to invade China. And what they said was that this was destruction of private property. Go ahead and make a five and we're going to write down, regard this as destruction of private property. So the British basically said that this was destruction of private property, uh, getting rid of all this opium. And because it was private property, therefore the Chinese government couldn't destroy it. Now they could certainly hold on to it, but they couldn't destroy it. And as I said, the British were really just looking for an excuse to attack uh, China anyways. So after the destruction of opium, the British then sent several warships and soldiers and the British Indian Army uh, into China in June of 1840. So then they bring their military force into China in 1840. And when the British are attacking China, they're not trying to like invade and take over all China. So they're not trying to control the entire nation. They're just simply attacking uh, various coastal cities that the Chinese had. Uh, the Chinese dynasty this time period is called the Qing. So the Qing dynasty here isn't really able to compete with the British. The British ships are pretty good. So the British are able to control the waterways. They're able to get troops on coastal cities and then withdraw pretty quickly. So the British just stick to the water. They don't really go in land. Uh, just kind of stick to the water and tax cities on the water. Uh, just kind of where the British had the advantage. We know British have a pretty good Navy. So they just stuck to where they had the advantage at and just kind of dealing damage to the Chinese over time. Uh, this is a painting of the Opium War. So this one is drawn, obviously, from a British perspective. You can see how they're British soldiers and everything, how they look, you know, kind of all heroic and brave. And then your Chinese soldiers do not. So that's kind of, you know, obviously it's from a very British perspective. But this is kind of a painting of it. So the British eventually end up controlling quite a bit of the Yangtze River. Uh, they also, by controlling the Yangtze River, that cut off a significant amount of tax revenue from the Chinese government. So eventually, after two years, in 1842, the Qing Dynasty then asked for a peace agreement. Oh, before I forget, number six. Um, have superior military force attack coastal cities, defeat the Qing forces easily. So write it down for number six. So it has superior military forces attacked coastal cities, and defeated Qing forces easily. All right. So what ends up happening? is the war then ends and when the war then ends they end up signing the treaty of nanking to bring the war to an end and the treaty of nanking will take me a while to talk about so we will talk about the treaty of nanking next time